Welcome everybody to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Hope everybody's had a good week and uh, it looks like we are trudging along to the end. So we're going to start off this week with season seven, episodes one through eight. Uh, before we get going, um, just quick introduction here. We have our uh, producer and the guy keeping this stream together. We got our guy Hitch. We got a soon-to-be award-winning comic book author oh, and yes. our man D P and our guy D P no. Brown. So uh, <laughs> I'll let you guys know a little bit about that before we get off of here. And then we also have one of our hardcore fans who's been around since day one. Our guy Admiral Tarkin. Tarkin. High five. High five. Me. Yep. Definitely. Definitely a high five. Everybody high fives each other, so we'll have to go this way. <laughs> very, very, very difficult. To so, I've been thinking I need post-it notes for where everybody is. Like, like you know, I got <laughs> right. one up there for DP, yeah. one over there for uh, for again. I'm thinking about it. Uh, we'll, we'll get it together. <laughs> Definitely will. Before we dive right into this, guys, uh, let's let DP let you guys know where to find us at nerdcyclopedia.com people make sure that you go into our site where you will um get uh, links to all our favorite platforms at nerdcyclopedia on instagram facebook and also on twitter um and while you're on that site you will see our youtube stuff carbonite bounty bs which is what you're watching right now net um nerd comic flick show we got another podcast and youtube show going on talking about your favorite you know pop culture um comic book show, um, movies and tv shows and just you know just pop culture you know comic stuff in general um make sure that you guys are listening to our podcast on our your, your favorite platforms such as apple Podcasts, google play stitcher iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, TuneIn, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. If you are watching us on YouTube right now, make sure that you are um, hitting that notification button. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Join our Facebook group. We want to get your feedback. We love your feedback there. Carmen and Bonnie BS, a Star Wars Facebook group. Um, you can write on you know Facebook and we are there. We will welcome you always. Um, and basically, you know, leave us some feedback. Nerds at NerdCyclopedia.com. We welcome all types of feedback from all realms and galaxies. <laughs> and that's, that's a great, great introduction. Near or far, far away? Far, great. far away. <laughs> right. So as we dive into this, guys, um, I guess we'll start this week with Hitch. What were your first impressions with the, uh, you know, the season seven? Yo. Of, uh, part one. So we're filling in some gaps, and, it, and it's interesting in the chronology of how things were released where this is. Uh, this is like some of the newer content. I think it's the newest thing before uh, Mandalorian Season 2. So it's this Mandalorian Season 2 Bad Batch. Uh, and, and obviously, we get the pilot, essentially, of Bad Batch here. Pilot arc explaining who these guys are to the point where they say their names 30 times. And, and, I, and I'm just saying thank you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's it was enough. It was in the one episode. Uh Really enjoyed the characterization in the Bad Batch. You know, they do a really great job differentiating the clones. I think that's one of the strengths of this uh, this series, and I think it's one of the strengths of that team. Uh, I enjoyed seeing Anakin running with the Bad with the Bad Batch. That was pretty uh, pretty rad. And the Ahsoka storylines are interesting. You know, the Star Wars has this genre of tale where it's like two groups of Star Wars characters run into each other, and that's that's kind of how the, you know how things get started, right? Um, uh, this is kind of like when the Mandalorians found Darth Maul. That sort of randomness. Uh, I like this set of episodes a lot. I'm mean, I'm really excited to see uh, what happens next. I mean, who knows what could happen? It could be anything. What about you, DP? Okay, so this this batch of episodes. Um, I mean, it blew my mind. I mean, I wasn't expecting the the leveling up of animation you know um of quality of you know um smoothest of snorri uh st snorri storytelling <laughs> storytelling that this batch of episodes gave me and i mean as a fan um of you know the the this just this series period and everything i didn't think it could do any better and it did i mean it it, it like i said these first batch of episodes just really stepped it up um from camera angles from camera smoothness from um the w the way they made it uh, disney spent money on this and they made it look like an animated movie you know uh, like like something that you, you know they, they will put time and care into uh, maybe a wally or something like that or any of their their biggest animated films they've spent money if this was their first 
you know, um, thing out the gate as far as like introducing the Disney Plus thing. Um, they wanted to make sure that they actually came with the goods and they came with the goods with these, you know, <laughs> this batch of episodes. Um, I love the um, uh, Ahsoka storyline with the two sisters and everything. Uh, they, they do such great characterization, you know, with making pulling us in, making us care about characters that we just now are inter being introduced to. And, you know, Ahsoka, just seeing her come back was just, you know, uh, 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 you know, gravy and everything. And um, the badge back, you know, bad batch characters. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, it just made me the backdoor pilot, <laughs> you know, it was what Hitch was referring to. Um, it made me excited for to watch their show and to review it. Um, this was a great batch of episodes. I can't say it enough, you know. Um, so I mean, if we had to grade it now, I mean, this it just gets my A <laughs> up there. And I, yeah, DP, I think you said you said a good point. I think Disney came into this at the right point because when these when these seasons came out, they weren't very popular. And I don't think they had the funding. And I think some brain, some smart person said, you know, we ought to stop here and wait. And Disney came along and injected a whole bunch of money into it and really made this last season really good. It's, it's polished, the texturing, everything with the, with the faces. And I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you 100%, it was like a movie. It was like a yeah. full featured movie, each, yeah. each episode. Um, in fact, I think they should chop that out. They yeah. should have just taken that Clone Wars, that um, that sort of comical agree. music, take yeah. that out, just yeah. run it all together, it. and you yep. have a, like an hour and a half, maybe mm -hmm. two hour film. Mm -hmm. uh, I really dug the way the the Bad Batch came in first, and they were and all the other clones were like, "Who are these guys?" And then they realized, "Damn, they're like the nerds we want to be." <laughs> I mean, they're they're making decisions on their own. They're doing really some really great stuff. Immediately, Rex was like looking at him like, oh, here's my guys. These are the guys I need to be taken into battle. Uh, I love the way they just they meshed so quickly. And it was like um, Rambo. You had Rambo in there and all these like really great high energy movie characters that I really enjoy all put into this into into this environment. Um, I, I really liked it. Uh, that was really great. Good music. I think the scoring is even better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. Notice they're getting the they're getting the more of the imperial march. They're getting more mm -hmm. of like stuff that really like perks my ears. You know, when I think of Star Wars, I think of music. I think of John Williams, and they're getting a lot of that in there now. Um, I can't wait to see how it ends, and so we can get on to like, you know, the big mama. The one <laughs> waiting to get into here, but it, it's great really great yeah and i echo everything you guys said um it's just you know when you see a six year to seven year time jump obviously we see the difference in technology but even in you know like we're saying the shadows of these characters i mean the facial expressions it's just it's literally night and day so those are things you know like you guys have said i appreciate as well as far as the money that disney's put into this i mean i believe this is you know a semi 4k you know i think it's 1660 but you know whatever it's filmed in or it's whatever it's it's um, distributed in. It's it's really crisp, you know, on a on a nice TV. So they definitely spent on this compared to some of the earlier stuff because essentially, like you guys said, you know, Disney Plus was coming out. The story wasn't finished. I mean, if we just think back to where we just finished at, at uh, you know, season six. I mean, they kind of had to do this. That wasn't in, in you know, incomplete se uh, series. So I like how they finally finished this off. But um, leading into things here before as we get things started. Obviously, we discussed the Bad Batch, and we won't go too, too much in depth because we'll obviously have some stuff about that here in the future. But um, very interesting as far as the big reveal that um, the clones have some sort of chip in their brain that allows them to be controlled, as we discussed, you know, how this Order 66 is going to play out and, you know, what makes some do the decision to do it and others not to. So uh, what were you guys thought on that big reveal? I mean, that's that's kind of that's huge. You know, as to now, we, we had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Typical. I, I would expect that. I would expect that. If the, what's the one thing you want to do to control someone is you got to you got to implant something. Either you do it with training from when they were very young. And I think, I mean, really, was it a chip? I mean, I guess they had to. That's easier to explain than just saying they were trained from 
they were, they were indoctrinated or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, they were just, this is the way, this is their existence. This is the way it is. Um, and, you know, but the chip makes sense. That's easy for us to think about. Like, we can wrap our heads around it. Oh, they got to a certain time. They had a little surgery, put a chip mm -hmm. in there, and that controls them. And then there's the supercomputer that controls the chip. So it, it makes sense. I mean, who knows? We all might have chips in our heads. We, they're just waiting for the right moment to turn them on. <laughs> We don't know. Right. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, I think that's a real, that totally makes sense because those clones did things that, you know, a, 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 someone that could make decisions wouldn't do, you know, as far as orders and direction. I mean, literally. So that, it makes sense to me. It's interesting to see like that, the, how their personalities come into play and how it's, it's, you know, thinking of like certain clones are more loyal, certain lo clones stick around longer. And they feel differently about about the Jedi, and they've had different experiences too. So, you know, this failsafe mechanism that would prevent the you know the clone army from doing whatever, you know, whatever it could possibly be, is such a it's an interesting like mechanism because it's not a computer chip; it's a biological chip. You know what I mean? It's right. not a um you know it's not a uh, like a like a metal thing, which is why they can't figure it out. And you know when we look at how like the Bad Batch referred to the unaugmented or unmutated clones as regs. And they no, say, oh, well, that. you'll I just do that whatever. Term. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. regs. Dismissive yeah. Re term regs. And if you can kind of see how, you know, they're a little bit more like straight up, you know, who's in command, who's in charge, blah, 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 right? And the the Batch sort of have a more, a way more, you know, ad hoc structure, right? They have a lot more personal initiative they can do things on their own like you like you guys are saying um i wonder what the bad batch is gonna, this is this is this is something i'm very interested in like what are they going to do when it when the the fan starts and the the crap is coming down the chute you know what yeah. i mean yeah and that's yeah. something new because okay. this is pretty new stuff that's a good point where are they going to go because their order 66 doesn't mean anything to them so where what's going to happen to them i still think that that Admiral Tarkin is going to pick them up and start building the stormtrooper army out of them. Maybe. Um, so, yeah. I mean, this is, this is, this, they remind me of like the A team, you know, they're, they're, they got of like the, the personalities of like, you know, Murdoch, um, <laughs> you know, um, uh, Mr. TBA Baracus, you know, the, yeah. with the big guy and everything. You got like the, the, um, okay. um I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the leader Hannibal and everything, and uh, it's, it's 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 the Star Wars A team. You got I mean, face. you got the techie guy, got face, yeah, yeah, exactly, They're right? You know, even George Picard is there. <laughs> It's, all it's all taking the tropes, all your favorites, and you <laughs> taking the trope and putting it in a universe and making it work. I mean, Dave Filoni and his his gang and everything. I mean, you know, I, you got to hand it to them. I mean, they 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 make they make characters work like how they're supposed to do. And like I said, if this this I think this was the first thing out the gate for Disney Plus. Um, to 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 get every get everybody, we we'll get the get the hardcore fans on board to to um to champion this because as, as, if you T Mitch you 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 guys been waiting years for this thing to end right you know mm -hmm. for the complete story so for for <laughs> if you get the hardcore heads out there like okay you know I'm I'm getting Disney Plus I mean it's Mickey Mouse but this is the this is Star Wars here so I mean I, I'm willing to give my money you know to um to to finish this story and if that's going to keep me on board for other things then I mean it's a you know it's just a brilliant strategy by them I was just thinking, DP, that this is like <laughs> <clears throat> that if they made this show in the eighties, Mr. T would play all the all the clones. He would be the clone. <laughs> he would play all the and they'd be clones. running in, and they'd be like, Commander <laughs> You know what I mean? I pity the fool that doesn't get their men down on the bridge and then they're like, Well get down here, fool, get down here you know what I mean? Like they'd all be they all be yelling back and forth. And, uh -huh. But the, but I was thinking the Bad Batch reminded me <clears throat> If the A team was just Mr. T playing all the parts in one episode, right? It would be it would be exactly like Bad Batch. Uh, yeah. Really cool stuff, right? I love Mr. Yeah. T. Can we can we talk more about Mr. T on a Star Wars podcast? Because that would be that'd be cool. Hey, he, he has a commercial now, so I mean, they brought him back. You know, <laughs> he's doing like some soap commercial. Yeah, we we couldn't do more than twenty percent Mr. T on a Star Wars. <laughs> more than twenty percent, then you're kind of like you're you're 
you're Trent, you're going into left field, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't you guys don't want to get me started talking about Rocky three? You don't. Oh want to man. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Let's, uh, let's, 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 let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> reel, reel, reel them back in. But uh, um. Here, here. But yeah, how about you know Ahsoka? You know, making her. Uh, I thought I thought we weren't going to see her for a while, but she she made her appearance. I'm glad that she got her um her arc, you know, and her um the the way they just developed like the sisters and everything, and how they um made the 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 one sister was really you know gung ho about you know doing things, and um, Ahsoka was sort of like the in between, you know, the, the sort of like um in between the two you know, and making her doubt certain things. Um, it was a really great dynamic between the three females. And I think that was really one of the first times we seen like um, them feature three, you know, strong females, you know, um, in, in this thing in such a um, prominent, you know, prominent role um, for for this back half of a very important story. I mean, you know, we start out with the batch, you know, the bad batch and everything, and then to proceed here, I mean, it just shows the diverseness of this universe. I mean, I'm 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 there for it. I I yeah. really like the uh, the Ahsoka episodes because they're the they're the a really great like example of a of a Star Wars novel trope from the Legend series where there would be a Jedi who wasn't like oh we're trying to pretend like they're you don't know they're a Jedi, mm. and it would be like what's the, what's it the like for a Jedi to end up in like regular life and they've got to mm. do these things and like how would they use their force powers? It's something that you'd see all the time with like, um, Corin Horn or, uh, Kip Duron. It's so sad to me that I know all those names like, like that. (coughs) 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 Sorry guys. I just ruined it. Anyway, (laughs) I like that. I like that. It's like a little bit of a fish out of water thing, but she, her, I like that the way they portray her competence at everything, just shining through, like she's good at everything. She's good at everything. She knows everything. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, what uh, like a what a Mary Sue or something like that is what they call it. Um, yeah, 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 that's our, yeah, that's our term. Yeah, but this but this isn't like a Mary Sue. It's more like it's more like if if you send a major league baseball player mm-hmm. and and you let them be the all time batter at a high school baseball game, right? Like what would that be terrible for the other team? That's what it seems like here. Less, yeah. less like a Mary Sue because it's earned knowledge, right? It's not like we don't know why she knows this. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 know and love and see her character develop to this point where she's not introduced as the the perfect, you know, um, um, per, you know, person or whatever. But um, you brought up a point about um the way the Jedi are um perceived in like the the in the, in the they're not they're not she she finds out that the Jedi and everything that's going on above or whatever. Um, is not perceived as what um, is 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 what, what what she thinks that it should be, you know, to like I guess all the the layman's, all the like the the main folk or whatever, you know, and it pl- really plays well on the politics of what people are seeing um, of what they know on uh, versus what actually is, you know, um, and we're seeing that through the through the um, through the sisters. And how Ahsoka is relating, you know, relating to that and how she, you know, hides her, 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 her being a Jedi and everything. So I thought that was a really great way to play upon, um, okay, not everybody is down with the Jedi. <laughs> you know, they're thinking they're, they're so, uh, a certain type of way and they're not in their eyes, I guess. Yeah. And it's, it brings an interesting point that we discussed and Hitch has said it a, a million times. I mean, you know, the Jedi at this point seem to be defenders of the upper class, meaning upper, the upper, you know, more scaled, uh, you know, I guess we would call them higher class people that lived, you know, in the cities of Coruscant as compared to people who lived under the city, you know. So um, it's unique that, you know, the Jedi Knights essentially are the army of the Jedi, but then there are millions of other Jedi that have different jobs. And I know Hitch has alluded to since day one, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to see more stories because we hear about the Jedi Knights, the Jedi Knights, the Jedi Knights, but, um, you know, more of the detective stories, more of the inventors, you know, if they would branch on the Jedi as, as the culture or as, as the, the creed, so to speak, it, it would be nice to kind of get more because, um, you know, it, it's interesting how we how they view the Jedi as a whole, but, Typically, I mean, to our knowledge, all we see are Jedi Knights, which are essentially defenders that were turned into soldiers. So I, I just thought that was interesting when she said that, how the way that the, you know, the folks underground or, you know, under the surface view Lower the Jedi. Class. 
Yeah, we'll say that. No, lower class people would be the Jedi, so to speak. So, you know, it was an interesting point. I, I really appreciated that to just because you don't see that, you know, in any story. No, not so. at all. Mm-hmm. And that and they're a majority. Like right. the let's say the yeah. lower or majority of any any population, any race, any civilization, who are the the bulk of your citizens are you know, lower class, let's say. Um and once they start to turn, once they start to think, oh, these Jedi, they're they're jerks. I don't trust them. All of a sudden, that starts to bubble up. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you get the lower class are now influencing the upper class, and the middle class are taking. They're they're just fueling it. So again, that's how Order sixty six was so successful because people already hated the Jedi. Nobody cared. They don't. They didn't. They they wanted them out. Nobody trusted them. So. That might have been part of it too. Maybe Palpatine was working that somehow with the with the gangsters and the, you know, working with the underworld, mm-hmm. the, the criminals, and getting them to sort of side with him and the uh, right, and, right, and influencing the culture. I mean, it harkens back to um, you know, real life and everything, you know, and politics and you know, Hitch, you know, always alludes to like you know historical um, 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 events in history and everything about how. Um, um, societies of change and everything how you know emperors you know decide um that th- things is just trickle down and also in this case trickle up mm-hmm. you know um mm-hmm. it's it's just an amazing thing that that this universe plays it out and it's telling it in, in a subtle way but in a real a real profound way to where we can recognize the details when we see it yeah and lucas wrote these stories based on what he knew what mm-hmm. he saw around him and mm-hmm. you know growing up in the 60s and the 70s he yeah. saw right. yeah. he saw this yeah. he saw yeah. rebellion he mm-hmm. saw you know fascists and yeah. these world conflicts and he saw citizens turned against their own country because of des- decisions that the government was making yeah he saw that and he said yeah. wow i don't need to think i don't need to think to- <laughs> Story. I'll just take this shit out of the air <laughs> and put it in a space <laughs> and put it right and put it into space. And you know, I'm gonna make like cool costumes. And I, well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna pay other people to make up that stuff. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, you know, write some really bad dialogue. I'm gonna get some cheeky actors, find, find some good, you know, um, uh, uh, good relationships with these actors and. You know, then I can just sit back and make trillions of dollars for the rest. <laughs> that was his plan, definitely. That was his. That was his plan. That, we, that, he was, was, that was it. That when was he it. was in well, high school, college, that was. His, you know, this was an easy lift. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't have to do anything. And look at us yeah. now. 50 years later. Oh, still, still like, you know, you guys draw me. I'm, I, I guess I'm no longer that casual, you know, <laughs> you said it. You're I, not a casual. Yeah, anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm indoctrinated. It's time, to, it's time to talk about class dynamics in the galaxy far, far away at a time period long, long ago around the battle of Yavin. And I, for one, am ready for it. I'm glad you guys are finally here. Uh, is Palpatine's revolution here, a revolution of, the proletariat against the corrupt interests of the moneyed class and the knights who in the Roman system, the equestrian class, the merchant class were called the knights. And so that alliance between the rich people and the Jedi, like you guys are saying is really tight. And what Palpatine wants to do is he wants to utilize the lower class and the power that's associated with manpower and with the military to overthrow those moneyed interests and to install himself as the moneyed interest, which is effectively what Augustus was trying to do <clears throat> and did. So, uh, you know, it all works out from a from a standpoint of you know uh, class structure and, and sort of class struggle. Um, but the Jedi being essentially you know independent actors who have their own mandate and sort of are designed to work for the good, well. You know, Plato's Republic posits that over time, what quote unquote the good is changes in societies. And that over time, things devolve from a standpoint where, you know, the Jedi are maximizing good and the honor and the force, right? And they devolve into something where you're maximizing money. 
and then you're yeah. maximizing power and then you're maximizing nothing but the knife which is what um autocracy is all material things right all material things. you're you're con so and that's what it there again that that's what sin is that's what the devil it uh, does that's what he gets you to to focus on is money sex mm -hmm. material goods it's th it's 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 just the, it, the stuff that you can touch you know it, <laughs> yeah but think and about the links this show is going to lengths to show you how unjust this system actually is they take us to Kessel here. They show us the Kessel mines. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy. they show I us like, this. I was like, I can recognize that reference. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to talk about about a Roman reference, the, the silver mines of Spain were basically described as this this spreading like 50 square miles, like this humongous area of misery where people were just worked to death, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them. And so you see this analog, like, is does the Republic really deserve to stick around? <laughs> And that's an interesting question to have at this point in my Star Wars fandom, really. Because is, like, the real point of all of this that being told that this, this devolution into monarchy from what the Republic was is actually not even any sort of change from democracy to autocracy. It's just all the same. And they're portrayed here not just with Kessel, but these, quote, native pop, these, like, native populations, right? these native like indigenous populations they run into there's always an overlay with some sort of colonizer that's implied to be of an off-world source right and right. so it's interesting to see how that is universal whether the planet is republican or separatist and so the hmm. real question is how could the jedi how could an organization like the jedi continue to serve the Republic as it's constituted when this is what the Republic is doing. It could. That's why it falls apart. Right. Yeah. That's why, it, that's why it crumbles because the, the, the there's no room for Jedi in the galactic empire. Hmm. Maybe. That's just not a thing. It's not maybe. a thing. There, maybe. The, the issue is there's no such thing as a philosopher King and you can't do it even in star Wars. <laughs> so you can't, you cannot be, a person totally focused on what is absolutely just and also a person focused totally on what is absolutely real <clears throat> and what is absolutely here. You can't do both of those things simultaneously because there is no overlap in those two natures. And so you can't be both of those things at the same time. And so what the Jedi have has, what has happened because the Jedi are a, you know, a sentient organization. They're not a, a, a deity. They're a sentient organization is they have over time, the goals of the force or good and the goals of the Republic have become obscured and they can't determine the difference between the two things. Right. And so they do whatever's good for the Republic. But I mean, at least during this era, it sure seems like things that are good for the Republic are ultimately bad for the force slash the Jedi. Yeah. What I'm seeing, you know, just coming in from, you know, where I'm coming in from and everything, the, the storyline spans like a, a, a long time and everything. And it's showing like um, how uh, uh, um, society rises is, is good. But if society gets too complacent, you know, certain things, you know, come in and take advantage. And it's like, you know, it gets infected, you know, if it doesn't watch itself, if it doesn't protect itself, and then it eventually falls. Um, and then, you know, just like with anything that goes up, it must come down and then goes back up. You know, the empire, it appears, <laughs> um, does get defeated and uh, a society slowly rebuilds itself and everything. So uh, it's it's a way of balance, you know, that balance, um, you know, I guess you have to have good with bad and, you know, good and evil, whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to judge it to be. That's just what I'm seeing with this, this advanced, like just crazy, just story, just this ex crazy expansive story that, that, you know, um, um, Ken was, you know, talking about this guy created and he's let so many people play in the sandbox and created so many great stories out of it. And I, uh, I, I'm just in, um, um, in awe of the way it's kept everybody, especially you guys. So, you know, so enthralled with it. Keep in mind as well. Um, just at this point, I would say, I would guess around episodes one to five, that's when the solo movie is taking place. I mean, 
So, you know, Ooh, is it really? Oh, wow. Okay. If you think about the timeline, it's right before, because as we'll see at the end here, Darth Maul is, you know, doing something else. So yeah, at this point, Han Solo or the Solo movie would have taken place um, because mm-hmm. that's, w- that's when that, uh, that faction, you know, is getting the money together to build the galactic empire. So if you think about where it's laid out, this is, but you know, there that were, there were stormtroopers in Solo. Yeah, right. It's and a couple what, years on because they, because he joins the Imperial army because that's an imperial recruiting right yeah but, so it, it might be after it's weird the way it's placed because i watched it again the other day and i was thinking about some of the aspects of that and then when you see what happens here at the end of this it, it kind of throws a wrench in your in your and then the whole story how they wrote it so it might be one of those storylines maybe the technology is a little off it might be the timeline's there but yeah you're saying i think it's probably split and the idea of it was maybe just a solo movie as far as not in a continuum, so to speak. Because if you were thinking about the way it's set up based on what we'll see here as it ends and in future um, episodes, it doesn't really linearly lay together unless you put it where it is now. Um, so it, it, that, that um, you know, definitely made me think, and as, as we discussed the Spice Run, you know, we first heard about that in, you know, some of the solo movies, we always heard the Kessel Run, and but the spy, the whole Spice and the kind of, you know, underground drug scene it's it's, it's an interesting to me you know that they kind yeah, of throw that, that into a good. star wars I like you know that. We, because I, you know really we didn't hear about it <laughs> i mean you've heard about the spice runners and you know the last prequel trilogy but you heard the kessel run from han solo so obviously he was a spice runner at some point and, and that was one of the things he was doing to make money so interesting how star wars had these layers and some of this stuff and you know it makes it more interesting um i'm i'm, I'm there for it you yep. know i mean <laughs> it's yeah. pretty um, cool it, it kind of blows your mind you need when you start thinking about it like you just yeah, kind of yeah. just stare like because because it, it makes you pause and then just look like wow this is this is this is it you know but um but yeah <laughs> i mean what, what, what can you really say this this was a, a a great batch of um good batch of episodes and i guess we'll wrap it up when we come back Two and two. Mr. Brake Caller over here yeah. on the brakes. Two and two. <laughs> He's running the show tonight. Two and two. Two and two, everybody. <laughs> no, you know what? He doesn't use it that much. He's literally getting getting the power from just people doing yeah, what he- Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great point, Ken. I mean, you know, it's, it's like using... Wow, you, you, I can't think of a movie or show that he, he doesn't have to use his powers. He uses his mind. <laughs> so he's he's using a lot of really passive force powers of coordination to make things run the way he wants and to make the right people from a very long distance corrupt and the right people uh, incompetent and the mm-hmm. right people competent. Like he's controlling a lot of stuff that is sort of you can't you can't ever see as well as hiding himself using like force. Mm-hmm. force like passive force abilities he's like a you know a mod buff right he has battle battle meditation or whatever he makes everyone in the in the party a lot better but you know <clears throat> so plato's republic and i i, I don't know if we, we want to even keep any of this shit but i'm gonna say it so plato's republic there is degradation <laughs> from um the state purely based on justice to the state purely based on military power to the state purely based on economic power to the state where the people take power but do are not able to decide what they want to tyranny, which is one person deceiving the masses and taking control. Um, the tyrant is what he's called. And Sounds like is, right now. What's that? Sounds like how we live right now. Yeah. Tyranny. Well, there are interesting comparisons to where in the cycle the United States is. I mean, ol- oligocracy is sort of the buzzword right now because everything's be- like these billionaire, this billionaire class of people. We had this uh, plutocratic, plutocratic class in the ni- in the nineteenth century, and we essentially said Mm-mm. they had too much power, so we- that was bad, and then we let it happen again. So you know, the problem is that there is a natural tendency in, in economics for capital to accrete, and that is because. Uh, Profit has gravity to it. And so money begets money. It's what interest is. Um, the ability to lend out money to people on terms of your own choosing. It's just a function of, of not just modern economics, but all economics, is the ability to forego a benefit of, of a uh, something now to reap a benefit later. 
And that's pretty yeah. much what, what all trade is. So it's not something you can really excise from it. You know what I mean? You can't take it out. Just sort of is what economics is. Um, I guess any, no one can never really own anything. <laughs> well, this, this is the question. The question is what isn't what isn't transient, right? Yeah. And if and, and really like you you have to look at it's hard for us as as humans to think to grasp the type of con like time concepts that you know are 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 going to be applicable to um you know really long lived species or intergalactic <laughs> species or you know these these um this the civilization like in the Star Wars where it's been around for twenty thousand years and it's yeah. this galactic spanning civilization with all the knowledge available to it and the magic and whatever, but you still can't cut out. The means of production is control as that that causes wealth to accrete because the very tranquility that you put on the pond, right, means that any ripple gets magnified. And so if everybody has one dollar and I have two dollars, then I can do what I want with the extra dollar. You just can't get rid of it. You can only import extra more resources to increase the size of the economy. That's the only thing you can do. And that's what inflation is. So welcome to Econ 101 with Professor Hitch. I All probably right. did a really shitty job explaining that stuff. <laughs> I, I think we did lose a couple of people. I think that, I think they all had to go to the bathroom or something. But. Like I said, <laughs> at the end at the end of the Clone Wars series, maybe I'll I'll just mash an episode together that's all the recorded bits I have to I drop it's outside like outside the lines and I'll just put it all together in one big mash that just like all the random shit we talk about. Maybe and you can run it real fast. Right. Sound like Mickey Mouse. Oh, I'm, no, no, that's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse free show. That one. I wonder why um um why Lucas decided to set this in a galaxy it, far far long long ago in a galaxy far far away. Like where did that come from? No copyright. <laughs> <laughs> because there wasn't any. I mean, nobody knew if that was real or not. So he didn't have to. He didn't have to buy rights to anything. Wow. He made it all up. <laughs> well, look at what, you know, a lot of other science fiction had been processed that was about near future at that point, too, because of Logan's run, even, uh, you know, TH 1338, all those, you know, there were a lot of like um, contemporary dystopic, um, like science fiction, you know, uh, Clockwork Orange was 71, you know, um, yeah. and so I think what, what one of the things he was trying to do is to marry that sort of science fiction that's all robot and, and, you know, uh, you know, math based or whatever and try to try to tie that into some sort of tolkien-esque fantasy element and by setting it in a place and time that's very far removed from our current situation and not the um outcome of it which is what like logan's run is for instance right. just to keep picking these because there's so many of them um, or 2001 a space odyssey for instance again a lot of them um you know he's able to say let's not think a lot about Let's not think a lot about the granular things that are happening now. Let's think about big things. And so um, there's this book called uh, The Hero with a Thousand Masks. Um, Joseph Campbell, I think, is the writer of that book. And it goes into this, uh, this theory that there are stories that are, that are essentially like story types that are so wired into our consciousness that, that they're uh, instinctual. Um, mm. And Star Wars... Is, is a really good example of that. Uh, when I was in school, one one time we did a, uh, we were doing a writing class and we used Star Wars as an exa as the example of this this hero's journey. Um, the plot of it, and we watched it, it was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool class. I liked that class. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so what Lucas is trying to do is access those deeper bedrock themes about, you know, parenthood and what do you owe your father even if you owe your father nothing which is what like episode six is all about and and legacy and tradition and access it in a way that is not dependent on you know there's computers in this but they're not computers you know what i mean there's uh aliens in this but they're not aliens they're just portrayed as everybody they just you know what i mean they're yeah. portrayed as people yeah. that just look different pretty much <laughs> right for the most right, part right. right so you know it, it's there's some really cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot I mean, of cool it, stuff it, to it, think it, about, it. and it's structured purposefully. I think, like, like, um, like you guys say, like Ken always says, it's structured purposefully like this. And I think that one of the things that 
Filoni does really well is access those what Lucas is going for with those themes and translate those themes into characters yeah. that we yeah. want to see now in right. 2021, like, like with better, Ahsoka. With better written dialogue. <laughs> with better dialogue, yes. And that's cool too. You know, we want to see we want to see heroes that are compassionate, right? That's the kind of our that's kind of our deal. We've had enough yeah. we've yeah. had enough, you know, not the actual so. Rambo one Rambos, but Rambo three Rambos. You know, Rambo one Rambo we like, but Rambo three Rambo no. We don't. We had a Mary Sue there. <sighs> so is not a Mary. Anyway, Sue. sorry. No, we're talking about we're talking about we're talking about Ray. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Well, she's a Palpatine. Oh. Palpatines are just universally competent. They yeah. can't they can't uh, fail. Yeah. That's their superpower. Yes. <laughs> but she's stronger than her grandfather. Come on, man. They're all they're all triple Leslie Nopes. You can't. <laughs> Leslie they're, they're, Nopes. Yeah, they're just, they just they succeed at whatever they want to do. <sighs> you threw the Parks reference in. I'll here. tell you this: funny. Leslie Nope is is one of the great fictional characters of the twentieth twenty first century. <laughs> I, I really like that show a lot. He's classic. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. would definitely be in the in the you know National Park Service for this administration too, which means that that when they wrote that stuff five years ago, they did a really good job. <laughs> like they really did a good job. They do a Patton Oswalt filibuster. Oh my goodness! I love that. <laughs> and then Thanos. <laughs> yeah. right. Um, but yeah, I mean, now, 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 now we're almost to that point. You know, it's like you now know, the trap is in place. The, 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 I, I want to thank you guys. I especially want to thank um, Ken and Hitch because we started out, you know, just. Was just gonna do just the straight episodes and everything, and you know, <laughs> I, I was stupid enough to bring up, okay, maybe we should get into this Clone Wars thing. <laughs> and um, I look, I looked at the episode counts, like they're never gonna agree to this. <laughs> <laughs> Happened. It was a hard sell. I remember that. It's, it was it not was, an easy it sell. Was, for you. I, I, I said this is gonna be. I'm gonna just bring it up and you know see see if they they take to it. I I, I really am um, grateful you guys that have having the patience to 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 wade through this this batch <laughs> batch of stuff episodes and everything to to for us to get finally get to this point to where we can actually get back to. Um, get back to, to, to what you guys are to fell, how, how you guys fell in love with this whole series and everything. So, well, my dad yeah. watched episode three, <laughs> like, like back then, like in January. So he's ready for the, for that one. I'll tell you that much. He's ready to go. We bring him on special guest. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we definitely left, especially ending on at eight with a cliffhanger there. I mean, you know, Ahsoka just, you know, she, she, I think she bargained um, after the, uh, yeah, the Pikes, you know, to get their, you know, whatever Trace, what are their name? Trace and Rafa, I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, definitely leaves us on a cliffhanger into uh, what we're going to do next. So, um, DP, do you want to explain how we're going to watch this or do you want to keep it in line? What, what, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to, because I, I sent a text out to you guys and um, there was a thing online as far as like how you should watch these next batch of episodes um, from the way the um, the next episode um, starts and it enter, um, twines the timeline of um, Revenge of the Sith. So you sort of have to weave in and out of, you know, Revenge of the Sith and the, um, the next couple, um, next four episodes, I believe, right? Um, um, until the very end when when the the, the sadness just happens, <laughs> um, and these it are designed just to be consumed like chronologically in the same. Like these are the same. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's 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 up. It's it's hey, I, I, freedom of choice is a beautiful thing. You know, you can watch it any way that you want. I know how I'm gonna watch it, but um, I would be happy if you guys, you know or to, to to get on get on board like that so at episode at episode three clone wars finale double size special episode is what you are pitching for next I, time I, 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 I definitely am doing that yeah exactly <laughs> you can do that because there's really only there's four episodes here to watch um, I mean, we'll just break it in half. We'll just half it, you know, each segment because that'll that'll be perfect timing. We'll just half each segment because the four episodes. I mean, 
I'll tell you what, the ending of the Clone Wars is 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 better than the ending of episode episode three. I keep, uh, I keep hearing that that both of them combined together is just great sadness. <laughs> it's it's great. Uh, it's it's an oh, emotional. Wow. It's it's an emotional. It's an emotional roller coaster and stuff. Well, this is the know? bottom of the of the story. Like, if you get a six episode arc for Anakin, right? This is the dip. This is the lowest point for him. Yeah. Right. Lowest point for him is what I said. My hand was right in front of the microphone, so I don't. I don't think so I, guess, so I guess the proposal is like you know we watch however you want to watch the episodes. Um, we're I guess the the next episode um, because I, I think I told Hitch um, we're we're supposed to do like a crossover episode with um, the girls from um, a Star Wars journey. Oh um, yeah, and they're and, and yeah they're doing yeah, like the um, they're doing like they did the whole Clone Wars um, you know review along the same lines as us you know like they did like their their whole podcast. And you know, I propose doing like a crossover wrap up episode, you know, episode with, with the girls. Um, do we uh, do we get do we get royalties from that? <laughs> right. We, we That's came sweet, out sweet, sweet, sweet <laughs> podcast money. Spread that around. Spread it around, <laughs> you know, spread the stuff. But um, but yeah, after we after we're done with this, then um, you know, we want to get on with 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 the girls um talk about some talk about the whole clone wars experience you know it'd be a really fun podcast um you know to wrap up with i don't think we should consider ourselves bound to be hitting a bundle of episodes of anything every week i think if we decide that we want to continue to talk about um our reactions to stuff for right. a week or two beyond where we would normally do that i think that's fine i think if, if we have a longer conversation next week <clears throat> And we plan on segmenting it, and it looks and it works out as a two-parter. I mean, we could always release it that way. I'm cool yeah. with playing it by ear. I think that yeah. for us, you know, finishing this project is a big deal. I mm -hmm. think getting to the end of the Clone Wars <clears throat> and <laughs> getting an episode out every single week, the whole time, no skippies, is is, no. is, oh, yeah, is pretty yeah. we, is we, a pretty we, big deal. We, we so did a means, good job. We did it a means good we're job. probably gonna make it as far as like will we make it through the, the season of the bad batch and into this you know um this this era of star wars tv where like you know you don't have to run with the kite the kite anymore it just goes <laughs> and then we're just doing this every week or you know we take we take a week break and it's like oh thank goodness we've done 40 straight episodes you know it's amazing that you know that we we got through this journey like how we did and we're real pretty pretty consistent with the journey and everything so i mean definitely you know applaud okay. you guys and everything i mean the episodes are all this they're all good they're all the same length they look right when you edit them like they don't look like there's a lot of gaps in them and you know also it's been great having fan like fans on our on our page on facebook has been really cool so you know thomas hastings thank you so much for keeping us going through some of those early seasons <laughs> when things were a touch rough right up up front um yeah this is our this is definitely like the biggest longest uh thing we've done on the star wars end because we've only done Mando one, Mando two, in the movies. I think we had mm -hmm. some previous movie specials for the episodes. So, yeah, I'm still, excited. Still a lot more to come. I'm excited for the future here because you know, even after we finish this, when well, we're done talking about the Clone Wars and we do move on to Bad Batch, you know, that's a lot of content right there. And then Kenobi and uh, you know, Cass Cassian. I mean, it's just there's a lot of stuff coming out even in the next year. So it's exciting times to be. We still got like solo to go through. We got um Rogue the, the, One. The Rebels, All the original stuff Rebels, we haven't done we yet. We still got we got we still got Rebels to go through. Remember that. We haven't Rebels, even watched that, those that, original that old have, Wars. Rebels might have to be a fall thing, man. That's that's a haul. I mean, we, might, <laughs> we might have to slot that in maybe for like the spring like we did this time, because that's a haul. Oh, okay. It really is. Well next next uh, December when we start, you know, not being able to go anywhere just only because of weather this year. <laughs> only because of and, weather. Only because of weather. And then, and then we can go and do Battlestar Galactica. I'm in. <laughs> yes. And then the reboot. Yes. Yes. Because there's all kind of stuff there too. Starbuck is a girl. I feel Come like on. I feel like eventually, <laughs> I feel like eventually, what's going to happen is like, you know, uh, there's going to be shows because, like you say, you start, you're talking about Battlestar Galactica, and I'm getting all excited because I want to do a show about Battlestar Galactica. And I know T. Mitch and I have talked about Dragon Ball Z, about doing our, you know, our magnum opus is 500 episodes, one episode a week. Oh, <laughs> Dragon man. Ball Z. I I watch Dragon Ball. I've <gasps> never seen Dragon Ball Z. I'll watch it for you. <laughs> I know you won't. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're still going up. I mean, we got a new season of uh, Super coming out. So, I mean, we're who knows how many episodes there will be? 700? You know? uh, we, we quit our jobs and do this. <laughs> Just that's, watch the goal. that's the dream that's the goal that's, dream, right? that's a dream and a goal i feel like you know? uh i feel like hobos in 20 years like what happened to you ah, i quit my job to watch dragon ball z professionally <laughs> <laughs> professionally <laughs> back in 20 back in 21 things look great that rescue plan was coming so I said, I'm not going to work for you anymore, old man. I'm going to watch Dragon Ball Z for clicks. I'm never going back to work for the man again. <laughs> A rescue plan. Oh, man. Fine. Yeah, buddy. You know, he saved my soul. <laughs> anyway, pass the beans. Oh, man. You guys are crazy. But yeah, man. It's like the way everybody said. We appreciate everybody coming along this journey. It's been long. It's, it's definitely had its... It's challenges, you know, making sure that we had, you know, content for you guys and made it enjoyable because we could have just did a, like everybody said, we could have did a, just a weekly kind of overview, been bland about it. But I mean, we've learned a lot. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. Put a new perspective on everybody's thoughts about the Star Wars universe, because I mean, just watching this, you know, for the first time fully in, you know, basically a run because I've kind of skipped episodes and, and never really watched before, but to watch us with you guys and kind of react to it, it's opened my eyes. As we said, we, you see me, I mean, I've already adjusted certain movies to uh, having new ratings, you know, just uh -oh. based on some of the things here. So, I mean, it's definitely been something I enjoyed and I, I can't wait to keep giving you guys more content as we see, you know, the Disney train that doesn't slow down. The Star Wars train is not slowing down. I mean, it's, the money's out, you know, as we say, the money, it's, it's, it's coming. Speaking of which, speaking of that Disney train, Hey guys, you know, I, I'm doing the promos this week. So if you like our stuff here and you enjoy star Wars, I have a treat for you. It is called the nerd psycho comic flick show. And it is on the same exact YouTube feed as this show. That's right. If you're not watching that show, but you're watching this show, it's really sort of, you know, uncouth it's wrong. And, and I don't appreciate it. But the Nerd Cycle comic flick show is going to be really awesome. We're going to be talking about Loki, the new Marvel limited series uh, starring um, Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. And I'm a big Tom Hiddleston fan. T. Mitch, what do you think about Tom Hiddleston? I think he's awesome. I mean, all of his, all the work he does is great. I, I really, I mean, I'm glad they cast him for the role as Loki. You know, it was it, when they announced him at first after some scene of some of the early stuff. I didn't know if he'd fit in the Marvel universe, but. You know, Feige and those guys just have a have a way of making actors come together. And from what we see on the flip side of the DC universe, everybody loves their job here. I mean, it's you know, the, if you see these stories with Chris Evans off the set, these guys are all friends. So it's really like a family atmosphere, I guess, on the Marvel side compared to other avenues. But uh, I, I can't wait to see him on his own because he really, I think, as a character, deserved this. You know, and it's kind of like really, I mean, Hiddleston's done good stuff, but. This is basically like his shining moment. I mean, he has his own series and he has his personality, which they let him do with Loki, which I really like. If you, I mean, Hitch, you know Hiddleston as far as a person outside of this. This is, I mean, he likes to do this, though. They let him freestyle when I was reading about it a little bit. And really, he gets to show off his acting skills. So I'm excited for it. 3 a.m. tonight, Eastern oh, yeah. Standard. So four hours away from now, <laughs> from when we recorded this episode, the episode one drops. Uh, so check out the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. We just dropped our episode on the rest, uh, part two of Invincible. So check that out. And keep your eyes peeled on this feed. Uh, well, we'd love to have you over there. It is uh, exactly as stupid <laughs> as this show. So if you like how stupid this show is, check that out. That's it. That's a promo. That was a good one. Yeah. Nice. Like that. Oh, I, wow. I think we're pretty much. I mean, I'm good. You guys, yeah. <laughs> you guys got anything? Else? I'm calling the show over. Look, look. If DP gets to send us to commercial break, you can take, you can take us out today. You can take us out today. So I guess that's that. So on behalf of the nerds and my boss on this show, Team Edge, I this is the way. This is the way. Nerdcyclopedia.